Before you accept the hypothetical deductive method as the best way to gain knowledge about the world, there are at least two important philosophical questions about knowledge that you should answer for yourself. The first question concerns the nature of reality. What is real? What exists? And therefore, what is out there that we can gain knowledge of in the first place? The philosophical field that deals with these types of problems is called ontology, the study of being. The second question concerns the way in which knowledge can be acquired. Assuming there is a reality out there that is in principle knowable, then what knowledge of reality is accessible to us? And how do we access it? The field of philosophy that is concerned with these types of problems is called epistemology the study or theory of knowledge. I'll start with the last question first. Assuming there is a reality out there that is knowable, how do we obtain this knowledge? Well, there are many different epistemological views. I'll just discuss the two most important views here. First, there's rationalism. Rationalists hold that knowledge is gained through reason. Using our mind's capability for logical, rational thought, we can deduce truths about the world without having to resort to experience. Philosophers like Plato and Descartes coupled rationalism with the idea that at least some of the abstract concepts about the structure of nature are innate. We're born with them. That means our mind simply has the capability of understanding these concepts because we already know them. We just have to remember or recognize them by using our reasoning. Empiricism opposes this view. According to the empiricist view, sensory experience is the most important way, and according to some strict empiricists, even the only way to obtain knowledge about the world. Aristotle is considered the first empiricist. He thought that the foundational truths about nature come from sensory experience. We can obtain more knowledge through deductive reasoning, but observation is the basis of all our knowledge. Aristotle didn't believe in innate ideas. In fact, he coined the term tabula rasa to indicate everyone is born as a blank slate. Our knowledge is not predefined. The mind is open to any idea. Of course, Aristotle wasn't a radical empiricist. He didn't object to rational thought entering into the mix, and he wasn't worried about using abstract, not directly observable concepts. I guess Galileo can be considered a moderate empiricist. He put a lot of emphasis on observation and experimentation, but he also relied heavily on logical reasoning. Galileo, in fact, famously said that the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. He had no problem using thought experiments and included references to unobservables in his hypotheses. Later empiricists, such as Bacon, but especially Hume and the logical positivists, were very strict empiricists, maintaining that only sensory experience could lead to true knowledge about the world. They considered statements about unobservable universal properties that cannot be observed directly to be meaningless. The contemporary flavor of empiricism is von Frassen's constructive empiricism. It emphasizes the role of sensory experience in both inductive and deductive methods, but it allows for theoretical terms that don't have physical, directly observable counterparts. In constructive empiricism, the aim is to come up with empirically adequate explanations, which can be considered true, to accurately describe the world, as far as the observables go. A constructive empiricist would say that the truth or falsity, as far as the unobservables go, simply cannot be determined. This recognizes that knowledge is provisional because it always remains possible that new, contradictory evidence will be found someday. 